Uh, what assurances legally, legally, not word of mouth, do you have that this smelter can't turn into lead? We've heard iron. We've heard steel. We know he has connections to lead. What legal assurances do you have from Mr. Kennedy that this won't happen? In the lease agreement, ma'am. Ma'am, we're in the city at this time is in the initial phase of a development project. The first phase is pertains to the issue of the availability of the property. If the sale closes and if the lease arrangement proceeds with Wings Enterprises, the next step in the process will be the submission of the engineering plans and other documentation regarding zoning issues. There are then the ongoing issues pertaining to the 190 pages of use and activity restrictions on the property from DNR, which are being continually monitored by DNR and the city. Okay, I don't have any trust in DNR. I'm asking you, what legal assurances do you have that he can't lease a piece of property and do whatever he wants with it? Because he will need because he will be going through a four-phase permitting process. Each step of the way will require it to be specifically delineated what the property or how the property will be. I'm talking about the city, not permits, not anything else. Well, the, what, the, how does the city protect themselves and the citizens that he can't take that piece of property, which by the way is prime real estate, and I think you're wasting it and throwing it away, and do whatever he wants with it. Your lease agreement does not protect the citizens are the city. Uh, I've been doing a lot of environmental research, and I am working with the Missouri <coughs> Coalition for the Environment, and that is being passed around. I wasn't planning on going over it, but they said keep it short and just do this. So I was, one of the biggest things that people have said when they say, well, I don't know, you know what's so bad about it. You know, EPA and DNR will protect us. Read through this. They're not going to. It's not their job. EPA is not is going to try to protect us after the fact once it's here. But you know, we found reports where it's up to 13 years later, they finally you know, seen a problem, trying to make the uh, corrections, give people time to do it, and all that to reduce emissions by 43%. It's not gonna protect us. We've gotta stop this before it gets to that point. DNR, you know, we're here. Their job is not to deny permits, it's just to keep track of them and to then turn it over to EPA if there's a problem. But they're not going to deny permits unless there's a major, major problem. It's just to control the emission. Um, lead is also, we all know what lead does. Lead is an emission from iron smelters. So that is a concern. Um, just There's things in here, the EPA, uh, they put monitors up, but they don't necessarily put them where the emissions are coming from. There's one, one of the second highest point source emitter for lead in the nation is the Army ammunition plant in Oklahoma. The nearest lead smelter is over 100 miles away. That's where the EPA put it. If, if it did go through um, and it does, it does get you know permitted as an iron smelter, if they wanted to do something like convert it to a lead smelter or any other kind of, um, of facility that would be different and would have a different you know, a different process and a different emissions profile, they would have to go through an entirely new permitting process in order to do that. Okay, let me give you an example of what a great job the EPA does making sure the communities in the state are safe. The Clean Air Act has been in place for about 30 years. During that time, we've had ambient, um, you know, air quality standards for lead. The Herculaneum smelter has met those standards for about three years out of about 29. So if that's your idea of doing a great job, they're doing a great job. If that's your idea of an utter failure to protect the community, that's probably the words I would use to describe the situation. And the community there, you know, there's people that every few years have to have their yards replaced. There's a big section of the community that had to be bought out. And there's ongoing contamination. So that's the EPA. Yeah. The, uh, there's some other things going on at the state level, too, with air quality that our little suspect right now, um, you know, we're in a non-attainment zone for pollution, and pollution causes heart disease and, you know, strokes and asthma, and it contributes to a lot of different health problems. 
and the state right now is asking to break out the non-attainment zone for particulate matter so that Illinois won't count in our range. And basically that will clear up the equation for more particulate matter in our airshed, which will mean that they can issue more permissive permits than they otherwise would. So um, there are lots of things happening at the state level that we don't need to be proud of. Can they just build something a half a mile away from grade school? I mean, I, I think there should be some type of, you know, after PPG's gone, that, that it should be, you know, some type of buffer zone. Well, there's ordinances, and the ordinances specifically say no iron ore smelter for 131 acres. For 96.7 acres, it says that it's recreational conservation. So the ordinances say you may not build this type of facility here. They are going ahead and doing this contract, and in the emails that we received uh, through the Sunshine Law, it's, uh, they say, don't worry about the ordinances, we'll fix those later. So, and, the, and there is a section of the contract that says that the city will not go do, enact ordinances that will adversely affect the business or prevent it from doing business. So, right there, that's saying that the city is going to go ahead and change the ordinances, which would normally protect the school kids and, you know, the community because it says no iron ore smelter um, and recreation. And you're not supposed to turn a recreation conservation district into a smelter. Well, I was just wanted to ask you all some questions because, like I said, I'm starting to get a lot of phone calls and things like that. And, you know, the other side's definitely not speaking. Well, and that's part so of the I problem. So I thought I'd come in and, and ask you all. You all are very informed. And, you know, I appreciate if, it. If the, city had no, if the city had a plan, then all of these things would have been able to be discussed, which is what we asked them to do, to stop, to think, to plan, and then act. How can you sign into a lease agreement that doesn't just affect yourself, I don't care how long you live here, but it affects thousands of people. And the only answers you have for questions from the citizens is, I don't know. If you don't know, and we're trusting you, how can you even sign off on something like that if you don't know? You know, at this time, you know, I said at the start of the meeting, you know, I'll allow 30 minutes. We we'll allow a lot more than that. Okay, so you want to answer my question. I have one more quick one. At the very beginning of all this chaos, before there was even a group established, I was at a council meeting where this young lady stood up and asked you, I want to know tonight if there's going to be a smelter in this town Tom, she's called you personally by your first name. I want to know tonight so I can put my house up for sale. Yes, ma'am, I do remember and that. And just That's like tonight, she got no answers. So now she's stuck. But I feel like I have answered, ma'am. How no, we we call. Call. no, 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 no. Questions upon top of questions. I don't know. Uh, she has no On a first name basis, please tell me tonight if this is what's going to happen to my town. Because if it is, my house is for sale, and she told her address, as in 15, 20 other people did in this room, and you lied then just like you're lying tonight. 